Hi, welcome to Steve's Garage. I'm Steve. This is my garage. As you know, we bought a Tesla Model 3 and I kind of like talking about it. It's kind of like being vegan or uh, doing CrossFit. Uh, I don't do either of those. Today, I'm going to talk about the Tesla. One of the main things when I'm uh, mentioning it to other people, one of the first questions they ask is, how long does it take to charge? Well, the answer isn't always that clear. Uh, it's a little complicated. The answer really is depends. So in this video, I'm going to try and tell you the truth about charging a Tesla. First of all, on a Tesla, how much charge you have left on the battery is measured by how many kilometers the car can go on the current charge. This Model 3, when I first bought it, was rated for 402 kilometers for a full charge until the battery's totally dead. Now that we've owned the car for about a year, put on about 10,000 kilometers and not a lot, now the full range of the car is about 369 kilometers. It's dropped about 8%. It's more than I thought, but that's a whole other discussion. So, obviously, as you drive, you drive a kilometer, and then the range that's left that shows on the car drops by a kilometer, right? Well, not exactly. That's what happens under ideal conditions. For example, my wife the other day was traveling, uh, she was driving about 70 kilometers along a windy, um, although highway, 70 to 90 kilometers an hour, that kind of thing. Not a lot of elevation change, and uh, temperature outside was like about 24 degrees, so the air conditioning would have been minimal. That, she went 70 kilometers distance, and the range reported by the car dropped by 70 kilometers. Kind of ideal conditions, right? However, city driving is another story. On my commute to work, it's distance-wise, it's 15 kilometers, and often the range will drop by 20 to 25 kilometers when I make that trip. So I'm going through traffic, stop and go. There's a few hills, nothing extreme. Um, it could be hot out, so I got the air conditioning turned up. Um, so that these things make a big difference into what the realistic range is for your conditions. So there's a lot of things that can affect the outdoor temperature, air conditioning on and off, type of driving, city versus highway. If you're on hills or if it's all just flat driving, what your regenerative brake settings are, are on the car, you can change that. Uh, how aggressive a driver you are, if there's a lot of accelerating or if you're more of a gentle, smooth driver. All of these things can affect the realistic range that you're going to get out of the car in that particular trip. Before people fly off the handle and have a hissy fit about the range and it's not being what it actually is, well, this is exactly the same story for internal combustion engines. My truck, we've got an F-150. If a full tank of gas, I can go 600, 700 kilometers when I'm driving in the city. If I'm on the highway, cruising, cruising speeds, you know, not a lot of stop and go, just sort of driving 100 kilometers an hour, I can get 1,200 or 1,300 kilometers on one tank of gas. Big difference depending on the type of driving. So it just so happens that the range on the truck is 1,200 kilometers and the range in the Tesla is only 400 kilometers. There is a big difference there, so I understand the concern. With gas-powered engines, the efficiency is way less than it is in electric motors in an electric vehicle. I'll leave a link down in the doobly-doo that kind of explains all this better than I am, I'm going to summarize right here. For the amount of en total energy that's in a gallon of gas, only about 16 to 25 percent of that energy goes to driving the vehicle through the wheels. In an electric vehicle, 86 to 90 percent of that energy goes to driving the wheels. So there's a big difference there. The range on the Tesla is rated at 400 kilometers. That's about the equivalent of amount of energy that's in two gallons of gas. So this highlights one of the main advantages of getting an electric vehicle, the efficiency. All right, for charging the car. As you charge the car, of course, the range, the kilometers, goes up as you charge. Makes sense. Now the rate that it goes up is how many kilometers you gain in an hour. So you get kilometers per hour, same as speed on the road. It's a little bit weird when you first think about it, but logically it makes sense. So ideally, if you had a long enough extension cord and you could charge the car at 50 kilometers per hour and you were driving at 50 kilometers per hour, you could drive forever. You just need really long extension cords and every car would have them and they kind of get tangled a bit. Not sure that's so practical. Or alternatively, we could have solar panels on top of the cars. As long as the solar panels could get enough electricity, enough energy from the sun for at 50 kilometers per hour charge rate, then we could drive forever but I don't think solar panels are quite up to that yet. I think I need solar panels about the size of my front yard. We really need a lot bigger roads. Yeah, not very practical yet. But there's always hope for the future that solar panels become more efficient, cars become more efficient, and maybe one day we'll have solar cars and we won't have to worry about this charging. It'll just drive on the sun. So Tesla comes standard with a 120 volt charger. Just plugs into a standard 120 volt North American outlet, uh, 120 volts, 15 amps, 1800 watts. It's pretty similar to running a hairdryer on full. Gives you an idea of how much power. 
The battery pack in our Model 3 is rated at 50 kilowatt hours. So at this rate of charging 1800 watts or 1.8 kilowatts into a 50 kilowatt hour battery, that means it should take about 28 hours to fully charge from fully zero to fully 100% if there's no inefficiencies. Your battery never gets down to 0%, so really this is worst case. So when I plug this in, <clears throat> it's a wall outlet. You look in the char, I get about eight kilometers per hour charge rate. That means if I leave it plugged in for a full hour, that means the range of the car gets increased by only eight kilometers. Of course, this may vary a bit. Things are never always the same. Depends on the temperature, depends on the state of the batteries. Usually, typically when I plug it in, I see about 13 kilometers per hour charge. So really this range is from eight to 13 kilometers per hour in that range. So at a 13 kilometer per hour charge rate, 400 kilometers range, it's gonna take about 30 hours to fully charge. So that's a little bit more than what I calculated previously. There's some inefficiencies, not 100% of the energy coming from the wall goes directly into the batteries, but most of it does. In addition, I think when the batteries get close to fully charged, the car automatically reduces the charge rate so the batteries don't overheat. If the batteries are fairly low in charge, you can dump a lot of energy into it really quick without much problem. As they get close to fully charged, then they heat up more. So you wanna back off on the current so they slowly reach the 100% level. If you assume your car is plugged in every night, say 10 hours, and the charge rate's 13 kilometers per hour, that means every day you can go 130 kilometers and you don't have an issue. If you go 100 kilometers during the day, at night you plug it in for 10 hours, it's gonna be fully charged in the morning when you get up and go the next day. So for commuters, this is ideal. You don't need anything more than a standard wall outlet, 120 volts, 15 amps. This is known as a level one charger. In our case, we decided to install a 1450 wall outlet. This is 240 volts up to 30 amps. So a lot more power can come out of this outlet. Then you just have to buy an adapter. You unplug the 120 volt adapter and you take the Gen 2 NEMA adapter for, for a 1450 plug from Tesla and just plug it into there. And that's all there is to it. Now we can plug this into the Tesla and we get a much faster charging rate. 240 volts at 32 amps, that gives us mm, 7,700 watts, four times as much as a standard outlet. So that means it should charge four times as fast. 50 kilowatt hour battery, 7.7 .7 kilowatt charge. That gives us a maximum of six and a half hours charging all the way from zero to 100%, much better than it was. That means every night you could drive the car right to 0%, plug it in overnight. In the morning, you're 100% good to go. One thing I did notice when I was making this video, if I plug in the car to charge and then I go sit in the car and watch the screen, the charging rate is slightly less than what I expect. And mainly that's because the car is on, fans are running, the, the, the car is awake. So some of the energy that's using to charge is being used to run the car itself. Once I close the door and I look through the window, the, the car shuts down and I get the 53 kilometers per hour charge rate. We've owned this car for a year. And to be honest, this is the only way we've charged the car. We've never gone any further in a day, so it's not been an issue. So recently we were gonna go on a trip. So I thought we'd venture out and try some of the external chargers, charge point, uh, flow, and the, of course, the Tesla chargers. Let's go give it a shot. First, I'm gonna try a couple of stations, uh, charge point station and flow stations are called. Uh, these ones have a J1772 connector for charging electric vehicles. So we need a J1772 adapter from Tesla. This adapter, $127. So I guess, as you can see, the one end mimics the Tesla charger and the other end, this end, will plug into the J1772 plug out of the field. There are two other standards out there that I'm aware of. One's Chatamo, it's called, and another called CCS. But adapters for those chargers that go with the Tesla, uh, a lot more money, like we're talking $500, $800 in that kind of range. We found that the 1772 covers a lot of chargers out there and most of the time we charge at home. So it's not really an issue. First up, flow station. This is my first time trying at a flow station, so it took me a little bit to figure out how to do it. it. Turns out you need the flow app on your phone, you need to create an account, then you need to attach a credit card to your account and purchase a minimum of $10 onto your flow card. I put that flow card in quotes because really your phone acts as the card. You type in the charging station number into the app, click start session, and then you can get charging. Now I was sitting in the car at the time and the car was on, so perhaps this isn't totally representative. I should be getting 44 kilometers per hour charge, but it peaked only at around 41. 
I didn't realize this at the time, but I should have gotten out of the car to really see what the maximum charging rate was. This flow station was rated as a six kilowatt charger. Therefore, I should be getting 44 kilometers per hour charge, but it only peaked at about 41. The next up is a charge point station. This is a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger, so slightly more than the flow station, about 10% more. Same kind of setup, install the app, create the account. I had to enable the NFC on my phone for this one because the phone acts as the card and it uses the NFC reader to verify that the card is yours. I got about 30 kilometers per hour charge, 192 volts at 30 amps. So actually a little less than the six kilowatt charger. I suspect the actual voltage available may vary a bit depending on the installation and if there are other cars being charged close by. At this location, there were two chargers, four charging ports, and all four were being occupied, so perhaps the voltage was slightly less than if I was there all by myself. Both the flow and the charge point chargers are known as level two chargers, which I think the 1450 outlet I have at home is also known as a level two charger. Now on to try the Tesla supercharger. These would be considered level three chargers or DC fast chargers. I've noticed a lot of these being installed lately, particularly in urban areas. Luckily, one is fairly close to where I drive by in my commute to and from work. There are 12 charging stations at this location, and they're usually at least 60% full when I drive by. Occasionally, there's only one or two stations available, so these are well used. Using a Tesla charger was way easier than the other chargers. Pull in and plug in. That's it. Tesla already knows your car and has your account, and you already have the Tesla app on your phone. There's nothing to set up. You just pull in and plug in, recognize who you are, and it charges it to your account. The only issue I had was that the cables are not very long, so you need to make sure you pull close enough to the charger. Since the superchargers use such high currents, they want to keep the cables as short as possible so they prevent any power loss and warming in the cable itself. Now check this out. I got 335 kilometers per hour charge rate. In fact, after I recorded this, my wife was charging up on a trip and grabbed a screenshot. 385 kilometers per hour. This is a lot faster than my home level 2 charger at 53 kilometers per hour. There's no voltage and current ratings listed. Tesla superchargers are DC and they bypass the charging power supply inside the Model 3, which makes it more efficient. At this rate, it would take about one hour to charge a car from 0% to 100%. If one is available, superchargers are definitely the way to go. I've summarized all this data that I took down, all the numbers or whatever, into a spreadsheet. Here I'll display it on the screen. Feel free to pause it or take a screenshot if you want to pick through the numbers. So how long does it take to charge a Tesla? Well, it depends. It could be an hour, it could be overnight. It just depends on the charger, the state of the battery, the temperature, all those kind of factors. I hope this clarifies a few things, it shows you how muddy the waters of charging are. That's a bad analogy. The video isn't necessarily comprehensive, but hopefully it's shed some light on a few things. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing, watch some of my other videos. Your feedback or questions down the doobly-doo. Steve's garage is now closed.